everybody, it's Miss Phoebus, and this is Lesson 41, Solving Quadratics by Using the Quadratic Formula. And I have to admit, I'm so excited, I get to share my favorite way to solve quadratics with you. And the reason why I love this way is because, number one, I get to sing to you, and number two, it always works. Always, always works. I call the quadratic formula the sledgehammer. You want to find roots, you want to break up that quadratic to figure out where it's crossing the x-axis, quadratic formula works every single time. My favorite. But there are other ways. So we don't just go straight for the easy answer. We have to learn all the different ways because sometimes quadratic formula might be a little bit overkill especially if you could look at a graph or, or factor pretty quickly. So what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce you to the quadratic formula. There is a song that goes along with it so I'm so sorry but my job is to get this into your head. I'll explain why in a moment. And um, we are going to have some quadratics that are going to be easily factored and I just want to show you that yes going through this process may be a, bit, a, little, a little bit longer than factoring but I want to almost like prove to you that it will work we should get the same answers okay now um, we will be talking about this a little bit more in the next video um, we will go into a little bit more detail with what to do when we have negative numbers under our square roots what that means but like i said this works every single time it ties a lot of the like simplifying square roots together um, it ties some of that together as well as you know making sure we know our order of operations can use our graphing calculator a little bit so um, just keep all of that stuff in mind. It's going to seem a little daunting at first. It'll get easier, I promise. All right, so our skill for today is I can identify the zeros of a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula. Now, in our standards, we are actually supposed to derive the quadratic from completing the square. Now, the problem that I have with this is that you have to deal with an a value that's not one um, in doing that. So I'm going to do a lot of the deriving. It's going to maybe be a little bit on the boring side, but you're going to see where the quadratic formula comes from. So we are going to talk about that. Um, you need to be able to know and apply the quadratic formula as well as recognize when the quadratic formula gives you complex solutions. So we will get more into the complex solutions thing tomorrow. Um, but quadratic formula, it's my job to get it in your head. And you're probably not going to enjoy it. But guess what? That's part of it. You either love this or you hate this. There is no in-between. All right. Now, before we start the deriving piece, there are a few other videos that are on this page that I do want you to watch. Um, I'm going to be showing them in class. So for the full quadratic formula experience, please watch those other videos. Um, one of them is a little girl singing it. And basically, if she can sing the quadratic formula, you can sing the quadratic formula. And then... Um, there is another version of the quadratic formula that uh, a class made for a class project, and it's to the, a different tune, so you don't have to do the quadratic formula to the tune that I sing it to, but um, it, there are other versions out there. All right, so we're going to derive the quadratic formula. This is actually a big task, and we're going to talk about how it was derived a little bit. So we start off with ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. That is the standard form of the quadratic. And we have to solve this for x. We're going to come up with a formula to where all I have to do is know a, b, and c, and I can plug it in that formula and it will solve for x no matter what. So the first thing, remember in completing the square, the very first step was to move the constant. So the very first step, move the constant. Subtract it, move it to the other side. 
Now, in order to complete the square where there is an A that is not 1, you have to do a little bit of dividing. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide everybody by A. When I divide the first term by A, the A's cancel. And then A just kind of pops up in the denominator for the rest of the fractions. Then we have to complete the square. So we have to take B divided by 2 and square it. Now there's also an A in there because it's in that whole division process. And like I said, it gets a little messy here. But what we're going to do is we're going to add that B divided by 2 A squared to both sides. That completes our square. And um, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Uh, squaring piece on the left hand side because my job is to just get that as my parentheses square. Remember that completing the square piece? So I'm just going to write this as b, I'm sorry, x plus b over 2a, all of it squared. And then what I did with this very rightmost parentheses is I just squared each part. So I took b, I squared it, got b squared. I took the 2 on the bottom and I squared it, I got 4. And I took the a on the bottom, I squared it, I got a squared. So I've got mess. That's <laughs> really what it is. It's going to clear up in a little bit, but this is, this is the process of deriving the quadratic formula. Somebody had a good idea, and this is their idea. All right, so then what I did with this piece, so I can highlight it so you can see. What I did with this piece was I got a common denominator with this guy so that I could combine those fractions. So that's kind of what happened there. So that negative C turns into a negative 4AC. And then I combine that right hand side, those two fractions, I combine them into one. And then now, so I've got my right hand side kind of cleared up. I'm going to rewrite it because it the quadratic formula like has a form, and so in that form we have the b squared first and then minus the 4ac. So we're going to go ahead and start getting it in that order. Um, usually you don't put a negative in the front because you might lose it, so it's, it's safer in between two terms. And then now I'm ready to start solving for x. So I'm going to do the square root of both sides. And when I do that, and square roots are hard to get into the computer and type. So know that those square roots go all the way across those expressions. So I've got the square root of the left. And then I went ahead and did the square root of the top and the bottom. And notice I got my plus or minus in there. And then we're going to clean that up. Um, and looks like I went ahead and I subtracted b over 2a. Not sure how I did that, but if you see this canceling with this, I lost a piece, I think, and I moved this over and it became a negative b over 2a. And then now my final job is to get that as one piece. Okay, so that is my quadratic formula. This is what we have to learn. But if I can learn this and know what A, B, and C are, plug them in to this formula, then I will get the right answer every single time as long as I can simplify properly. That's one of the keys. Now, who had a big brain and figured this out? This guy right here. The quadratic formula covering all cases was obtained by the Belgian mathematician Simon Stephen in 1594. Look at that big brain. Okay, and so he was the one that came up with how to get this quadratic formula. Now there were other, like, kind of precursor. There were some guys in um, Persia, like Saudi Arabia, um, during the Dark Ages. They kind of worked on it. And then later on we had Rene Descartes, the guy that came up with the graphing stuff. Later on he wrote a book on it. So we had lots of contributors to it, but this guy was the main guy that was able to get us the quadratic formula. So whether you love it or hate it, you can thank this guy. All right, 1594, we're still using it today because it works, and that's pretty cool. All right, now, I'm still working on this. Um, virtual kids, not sure how I'm going to have you do this, 
but I do need you to memorize the quadratic formula. I usually have people say it to a teacher, a family member, an additional person of their choice, and then turn it in. Um, I'm working on it. So we'll figure out virtual kids what we want to do. There may be some sort of videotaping involved. I don't know. I'm still playing with it. But the kids that are in class are going to get a sheet that looks like this, and they are going to be so excited to say the quadratic formula from memory. And you can say it or you can sing it, but you gotta, you got to know it. You can't use it if you don't know it. And guess what? Not on the end of course. And I actually had to take, in order to become a math teacher, I had to take a math test. And my freshman, my freshman math teacher, she was like this cheerleader, and she was like, woo, and we had to sing the quadratic formula in front of the principal. And I was like, you know what? While I was doing it, I was like, this isn't terrible, but this is kind of embarrassing. And then, later on, when I was taking this test to become a math teacher, guess what I needed? I needed the quadratic formula, and guess what I was humming in my head? Try not to do it out loud, because I was testing. But I was humming the song in my head. So I was thankful that I had it when I needed it. I kind of pulled it out of thin air. I was like, oh yeah, I know this. And so I was able to use that. Um, I've had kids from the past come back and say, thank you, thank you, thank you for making me memorize the quadratic formula. I needed it in college, and I knew exactly as soon as, as soon as I needed it, it was there. So I do want to get it stuck in your head because you will benefit from it for a long time, especially if you continue on an academic type of path. All right, so here we go. This is what we're using. Make sure you write it down, and I'm going to sing it to you. Okay, so you fill it in the box, you can pause the video, I'm going to sing it to you. You ready? Here we go. So the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now, I sing this a lot by myself, but I love it when my classes start singing along with me. It makes me feel so happy. Um, and it just kind of solidifies that you know that for me, um, which is really important. Like I said, on the end of course, you're not going to get this formula on the ACT. They're not going to provide it for you. If they do, that is a giant gift. You are expected to know it. Okay. Now, when should you use the quadratic formula? When you are required to use it. So that means in the instructions, it says, I want to see quadratic formula. I don't know, and I don't care if you can graph it or if you can factor it. I want to see quadratic formula. When factoring looks difficult, quadratic formula, good to go. When the quadratic is messy, you've got decimals and fractions everywhere, oh my goodness, and she wants me to solve this, quadratic formula is the way to go. When the zeros are not nice, when you look at that graph and you're like, mm, it's in some in-between stuff, it's not going to be nice, this is going to work, okay? All right, now, I'm going to do lots of singing, and if you like to sing along with me, great. If you don't want to sing along with me, that's also fine, but don't get mad because I'm trying to get it stuck in your head. Don't get mad at me because I'm singing, okay, because I want it to be stuck in there. All right, you ready? The very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to identify our A, B, and C. We've been looking at A and B when we did our quadratic. We looked at B a lot when we were doing our completing the square. So we are going to identify A, B, and C first. So I'm just going to write that over here. A equals B equals C equals. If we have this messed up, like it's not in standard form, it needs to be in standard form. Okay? It has to equal zero. All of these things have to be true so that I'm pulling the right numbers because I can guarantee you, you can pull any three numbers, run the quadratic formula with it, but you're not necessarily going to get the right answer. So, A is the leading coefficient. A is 1. B is the number in front of X. B is 2. And C is the constant at the end. C is negative 8. So we've identified A, B, and C. Now we need the quadratic formula. So now I'm going to sing to you. You ready? Here we go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to substitute in. So we are going to take our B 
pull it out, put two in every spot where we see a B. Take out A. Everywhere we see an A, we would put in a 1. And C, there's one place for C, we put in a negative 8. Okay? So X equals a negative 2. And I was going to wrap it in parentheses. You can. You don't have to. But definitely here when we square R2, we do want to start wrapping it in parentheses so that we always get a positive number from that. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 8. We're just plugging stuff in all over 2 times 1. Okay, so all I did was I took the variable out and I put in the numbers. And it matters the placement, it matters what number you put where. It matters, okay? Be careful for signs and things like that. Now, I love you guys, but you and every other teenager I've run into have trouble with order of operations. So if that's you and you're having trouble with order of operations and you keep getting this wrong, I am recommending to shove all of this, not the square root, but the stuff under the square root, that radicand, put all of it in the graphing calculator, parentheses and everything. Stick in the graphing calculator, get an answer, okay? Because I want you to get the right answer. And if you're getting the wrong answer because you're messing up your order of operations, that's a little silly when we have a graphing calculator to use, okay? So be breaking out that calculator and using it. So this is a negative 2 plus or minus the square root of... 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 8 ends up being 36. All over 2 times 1 is 2. Now, we're going to pull out some of the stuff that we learned last week, like breaking down square roots. Tell me about the square root of 36. The plus or minus is already in there, so you don't have to worry about the plus or minus right now, but don't lose it. So this is negative 2 plus or minus 6 all over 2. And this is really two problems. Let's write it like this. I might need to change some colors. So this is negative 2 plus 6 all over 2 and negative 2 minus 6 all over 2. Now we want to do the addition subtraction first and then we'll do the division. So tell me about negative 2 plus 6. 4. 4 divided by 2? Two. 2. And then negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. So we have two zeros there. Now this is one that is factorable. So let's look at how we can factor this. Can you find two numbers that multiply to give you negative 8? Those same two numbers have to add to give you 2. Well it's going to be 4 and negative 2. And then when I put them in their parentheses, and I set it equal to 0, if x plus 4 equals 0, what does x equal? Negative 4. If x minus 2 equals 0, what does x equal? x equals 2, which are the numbers that I just found. Okay, so yes, sometimes factoring is easier. But I really want to show you that the quadratic formula is going to work no matter what. You could have factored or you could have run the quadratic formula. Now, there are times, remember, unfactorable. There are times things are unfactorable, but the quadratic formula will work every single time. So you cannot say unfactorable at all, at all. If I say solve this quadratic and you go to try to factor it and it doesn't factor, you can't say unfactorable and move on. You have a method that will always work from now on, and you, you need to use it. You need to know that this is the go-to granddaddy method of them all that will always work, that sledgehammer that will break this up into your two roots every single time. Okay? So let's go through it again. It is a process, but a lot of it is just knowing the formula that's the biggie because all we did was we traded stuff out we simplified and we got some answers so knowing the formula is the key so let's look at number two a equals one b equals four c equals negative 21. all right so here we go 
x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we're going to plug this in. So b is 4, but this is going to be a negative b, so it's a negative 4. Plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 21 all over 2 times 1. So remember, we're starting off easy. Yeah, A is 1. That's kind of not interesting. It'll be okay. I'm working on, in my calculator, what's 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 21? And you want to just put it all in there. Don't try to break it up or do anything special with it. Just shove it all in the calculator. All right, so I've got negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 100 all over 2. Okay, so the square root of 100 plus or minus 10, but we already have our plus or minus in there, all over 2. And then now I can add negative 4 and 10 together. So I want to start putting those together as negative 4 plus 10 divided by 2 and negative 4 minus 10 divided by 2. So tell me about negative 4 plus 10. 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Negative 4 minus 10 is negative 14 divided by 2, negative 7. Now, if you want to check, you can go back and pick one of your numbers. Negative 7 squared plus 4 times negative 7 minus 21. You hit the enter key on the keyboard, you better get 0. If you don't get 0, we did something wrong. So you can check yourself. And you can even check yourself with the um, irrational roots, the ones that have like the square root of 3 in them and stuff like that. You can do that too. All right, so here we go. Number 3, we're looking at A, B, and C. So A equals 3, B equals 6, C equals 3. So here we go. You ready? I'm going to sing to you. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right, we're going to plug it in. You ready? So negative B is going to be a negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 3 times 3 all over 2 times 3. Okay, so then now we need to figure out what's under the square root. So we need 6 squared minus 4 times 3 times 3. What do we get? 0. Negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 0 all over 6. Now what's the square root of 0? Square root of 0 is 0, so negative 6 plus or minus 0 over 6. And adding or subtracting 0 isn't going to do anything to that negative 6. So we're really looking at negative 6 over 6, and negative 6 divided by 6 is negative 1. So I have one solution. And what that means is on my graph, I should have a graph that looks like this, where it's just touching the x-axis at negative 1, and it's not crossing and, and getting two answers. It's two of the answers that are the same. So it looks like I have only one answer. All right, so that's what you do if you end up with the square root of 0. It just kind of goes away, and you don't need to worry about the plus or minus. All right, let's look at number 4. Now, 1, 2, and 3 equal 0. Do you see how number 4 does not equal 0? We need it to equal 0 because if I just do A, B, and C and don't change the sign on that 2, I am going to get an answer. But I can guarantee you that that, actually, I'm going to get answers, and those answers are probably going to be wrong. So I want to make sure that I get the right thing. So it has to equal 0. It has to, has to, has to. I will have people that run the quadratic formula with the wrong numbers and get the wrong answers, and they're like, I don't understand why. And I'm like, you didn't make it equal zero. Make it equal zero. And you do that for factoring, too. Um, all right, so let's see. Our A value is 1. Our B value is 4. Our C value is negative 2. I have a song to sing for you. Are you ready? 
x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative b, negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 2 all over 2 times 1. All right, so let's figure out what's 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 2. I get 24. So I've got negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 24. Now this is the reason why up until this point you could have put the square root in. But 24 is not a perfect square. I don't want a decimal. I want a simplified radical, and that's what I want you to write your answers with, simplified radicals. So that's why we don't put the square root in the calculator, because it will only give us a decimal at this point, and we don't want that irrational decimal. Okay, so 24, let's break it down. And we need to do that first before we do any kind of simplifying fractions. People get into their heads that they can simplify the fractions and then go and simplify the, the radical. There is an order to this, so we do the radical first. Okay, 24 is 4 times 6. 4 has a pair of 2s. 6 does not break down into anything helpful. It's 2 times 3. So we're going to pull out the 2 in front. So we're going to have, I'm going to see it over here, negative 4 plus or minus 2 square roots of 6 all over 2. Now, you can simplify these fractions, but you're going to look here and here. And if you try to simplify the radical before doing this, or you try to do this before simplifying the radical, you're going to get it wrong. I don't want you to get it wrong. And here, and we're going to see, can we divide by the same number? We can divide them all by 2. So let's divide everybody by 2. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, plus or minus. 2 divided by 2 is 1. I can write a 1, or I can just write the square root of 6, over. And then this 2 divided by 2 is 1, but I don't really need that denominator of 1, so I can leave it in here is my answer. Now, you've seen answers like this, like when we were taking square roots. Right? So, and doing the completing the square stuff even. So you can have answers that look like this. This is an irrational answer. That means that my um, original problem is not factorable. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't have solutions. Okay? So it has solutions. I could do completing the square on this one. But this is my favorite method, my go-to method. And that's what I want to share with you today. So we're going to keep on keeping on. You ready? We have to make it equal zero. Now, do you see how this is a negative 3x? I have to be careful when I add 3x. I need to make sure it's in the middle here when I add 3x because I want to get my a, b, and c right. If they're out of order, and I pull those numbers out of order, my answer is going to be wrong. So a is 2, b is 3, C is 10. I had this in mind when I was teaching you about standard form back in unit 4. I needed you to be able to write things in standard form because it's important. Because now order matters in the numbers that we're pulling. Hey, I've got a song I need to sing for you. You ready? Are you singing with me yet? Or are you just like, <sighs> she's singing. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, so we're going to plug it in. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 10 all over 2 times 2. All right, let's work on what's underneath the radical. So we've got 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 10, and I get negative 71. Oh, that's interesting. All over 4. Now, there's a small issue, right? We're not allowed to have a negative number underneath the radical. So that means that this is no real solution. 
that means if I graph this in my graphing calculator, let's do that. Let's graph this in the graphing calculator. It should not cross the x-axis. 2x squared plus 3x plus 10. And this is what I do sometimes if I don't believe, if I'm like, hmm, I don't feel really good about this. I should be able to graph it and not get it to cross the x-axis. So if I want to double check and make sure that no real solution is correct, then I should be able to graph it and not see any x-intercepts. And guess what? There aren't any x-intercepts, so no real solution is the right answer. Now, I do want to see the work. I want to see what makes you say no real solution. So I do want to see all the way down till you get to that negative square root, and then you can write no real solution. Okay, none of this just finding the zeros. There is work behind this. Lots of work, lots of things to show me. Don't just get the answers. I want to see the process. But you can use the graphing calculator in this form to check. All right, so let's look at number six. Why don't you try to do number six? See what you can do. See if you can remember the quadratic formula on your own. Test yourself. Pause the video now. All right, one of the first things that we have to do is we have to move this negative, move this 12x, make it negative 12x, and have negative 3x squared minus 12x plus 14 equals 0. That's the first move. Then we're going to do a, b, and c. And so a is negative 3, b is negative 12, and c is 14. So I want you to go look at your answers, and if you pulled the wrong numbers, I need you to go back and rework this problem. Okay, and the number piece, what you pulled for A and B and C is important because they have a cer certain specific place to go. And if you said A was negative 3 and B was 14 and C was negative 12, we're going to get a different answer. So we need to get the same answer. All right, so here we go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So now we have a negative negative 12, which is a positive 12 plus or minus the square root. The parentheses are really important here when we go to square this. So make sure you have them. If you don't, you're going to get the wrong answer from the calculator. 4ac, and we're just going to shove it in a calculator and get an answer all over 2 times negative 3. All right, so, lost my calculator. So we've got negative 12 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times 14. And that is 312. So 12 plus or minus the square root of 312 all over negative 6. Now, 312 is divisible by 6. It's 6 and 52. 52 is divisible by 2. It's 2 and 26. 6 is 3 and 2. I've got a pair of 2s. 26 is 2 and 13. That's not going to be helpful. So I can go back to 26. So 26 and 3 have to stay underneath the radical. So I'm going to come over like down here in this corner. So I'm going to have 12 plus or minus. I'm pulling out a pair of 2s. And then I'm going to multiply that 23, or sorry, 26 and 3 here. I'm going to multiply those. They have to be underneath the radical. So 26 times 3 is 78 all over negative 6. Now, we are going to look at simplifying, but remember the radical is protected, so we're not looking at that. We're looking here and here and here. And when we are doing this, we are going to divide by a number, and most of the time we want to, see how that denominator is negative? We want to get that negative out of the denominator. So they all are divisible by 2. But let's divide them by negative 2. You're going to see that a little bit more than just dividing by positive 2. Okay? So that's only if the denominator is negative. So 12 divided by negative 2 is um, negative 6 plus or minus. Now, the whole um, dividing this 2 by negative 2 doesn't matter because it's got both the plus or minus sign. So just divide that by 2. That's going to be a 1 and then square root of 78. Run it into my work. All over, now, negative 6 divided by negative 2 is 3. 
and that is going to be a good way to write that. Now, it's all divided by 3. It's not just the negative 6 divided by 3. It's all over 2a. So you have that one big fraction with a little denominator. So don't try to clean that up any more than you've already got there. All right, so here's Emily. Emily can sing the quadratic formula. I don't know if you can hear. If you can't hear her, she's singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star right now. Let me move my little thing. But if Emily can sing this, you can too. And if you can't hear this video, we need to go watch the other video. She knows the quadratic formula. Now, she's like, well, right now, she's probably way older than you because this is a very old video. But she's like two, maybe three in this video. Does she understand what the quadratic formula does? No. She knows it, okay? She can sing the song. Now, if a two or three-year-old can sing the song, you can sing the song. Or at the very least, say the, the words that go along with it. You don't have to be able to sing it. We're not all, you know, vocal magicians, but you should be able to at least know it and say it, to get it memorized. All right, there is another video. It's called Quadratic Formula the Musical. It is a little on the long side, but it is to the tune of um, Adele's Rolling in the Deep. So there is that as well. Let me share with you some wonderful math memes. This guy is really committed to the quadratic formula. He got it tattooed on his arm. He also liked Batman, obviously. Um, and then you see all kinds of shirts. That's some kind of elvish. I can't read, but you know what it means. Now, I want you to learn the quadratic formula, and I want you to learn the quadratic formula. Uncle Sam and I both want you to learn the quadratic formula. Why would you graffiti the quadratic formula? Some thugs just want to watch the world learn. It's the evilest thing I can imagine. I don't know if you guys watch the Powerpuff Girls, but they're from the Powerpuff Girls. All right. Um, remembers lyrics to favorite song, but can't remember the quadratic formula. Don't let your brain do that. Get it in there somehow. This is my favorite. I love this. I love Sheldon, too. What do baby parabolas drink? Quadratic formula! I love the quadratic formula. All right, so quadratic formula, need to learn the song. Need to, need to, need to, okay? You need to be able to pull it out of your head when it comes to be test time. Now, I know that you take your test open note, okay? But guess what? The end of course is not open note. So guess what? Every time I have the chance to sing the quadratic formula and annoy you, I'm going to take that opportunity. So every homework problem that I have to work in Google Meets or in class, I'm going to sing the quadratic formula to you. Anytime it pops up like tomorrow, we're going to sing the quadratic formula. So go ahead and embrace it. It's the quadratic formula. All right. So I will see you guys in the next video. I'm so happy to share this with you. It's one of my favorite lessons. All right. Bye, guys.